Level 370. You feel a calming sensation. Survival difficulty. Class 0. Safe. Unsecure. Devoid of entities. An image of level 370. Description. Level 370 is an expansive complex of interconnected rooms and corridors partially submerged in undulating, lukewarm water. Each area of the level varies greatly in size and structure. Some rooms are small, with their walls forming simple shapes and clean designs, whilst others are more bizarrely shaped, either lacking a definitive form, or being massive in size. All, however, are equally abnormal. The walls, ceilings, and floors of the level all appear to be constructed from the same white ceramic tile, with the only deviation from this color being the blue-green hue of the water. The tiles on the walls are eerily pristine in condition, all identical to one another, without a single hint of damage on the shiny surfaces. Testing of said tiles with various destructive forces has shown them to be practically indestructible. Consequently, the prospect of boring through the level's walls to aid travel has been deemed infeasible with currently available technology. The architecture of level 370 is varied, but strict in nature, keeping a shred of order amidst its bedlam, all areas in the level connect to each other in a senseless manner, with none having an easily identifiable purpose. Although the intended purpose of each area is difficult to ascertain, they are much too large to properly serve the function of a standard pool. The abnormality of level 370's geometry nullifies any purported purpose it might serve. Pillars protrude out of the water in certain areas, much too large in quantity to justify their numbers. More open areas, submerged in water, lack ledges for one to hoist themselves onto. Light is cast from irregular angles, leaving some areas completely cast in darkness, and staircases descend directly into deep pits of water, hinting at a possible past wherein the level was not submerged in water. Entrances to these deep areas are typically found in the form of spiral staircases or underwater boreholes. It is strictly unadvised to explore such areas due to their inherent danger, caused by a lack of adequate lighting and their unmapped nature. Without the proper equipment, one could easily get lost or even drown in the level's depths. These odd structures have given rise to a plethora of theories and speculations, but none of them are without holes in their reasoning. No clear conclusion pertaining to the level's chaotic architecture has been drawn thus far, and the exact reason as to why the rooms are formed in this manner remains unknown. Investigation has shown that traces of Epsom salt magnesium sulfate are present in the waters of level 370. This compound, when engulfing one's body for extended periods of time, has a naturally relaxing effect, relieving muscles and alleviating bodily pains. Alongside this, traces of multiple unknown compounds were also found present in the water. The origin and properties of these substances remain unbeknownst to researchers at the time of writing, but due to their coexistence with the aforementioned Epsom salt, it is believed that they enhance the water's relieving effects via anomalous means. Interestingly, the minimal but constant rippling is present on all liquid surfaces within level 370, despite it having no apparent sources. It is unknown whether this rippling originates from a certain point in the level, or if it is a property of the water itself. Current theories state that the level may be so large that it has developed its own tidal forces, a phenomenon unseen anywhere else in the back rooms. Of note, the temperature of the water is always consistently lukewarm, even in the dark corners of the level that are untouched. By the light, sound is severely altered in level 370. Examples include the sudden dropping off of noises produced in the level, sound waves not reverberating as they should, and speech feeling muted or dampened. It is suspected that this primarily stems from the sound of the water, which behaves in a subtly unorthodox manner. In certain explorations, the sound of the water is reported to be quiet, almost calming, whilst in rarer cases, it quickly becomes obtrusive and drowns out other sounds. The cause of these effects is still undergoing research, but no concrete conclusion has been drawn thus far. Entities. Level 370 is thought to be entirely devoid of life. No encounters with entities or other wanderers have been recorded in the level. 
it is not known if this results from a previously unknown isolating property of level 370, or if the level is so unimaginably large that one could not possibly come across another living being within it. Lest new developments occur, the level shall remain classified as devoid of life. Bases, outposts and communities. Due to a lack of general incentive, its possible isolating properties, and the fact that its terrain does not allow for permanent settlements, no outposts exist within level 370. The level's immense size and its inability to sustain life also do not entice long-term inhabitants to attempt the creation of permanent housing, and community building would prove difficult due to its strange auditory properties. Although with all of these things aside the Greyhand has established a small village where they discovered a way to turn the water bacteria into a planting soil then use it for planting sayads of various plants, currently they aren't open for new members but are very welcoming to any traders. Attached information. The following is what is generally accepted to be a page of an unknown author's journal, transcribed verbatim. Its inclusion in this file stems from its popularity in wanderers' circles, particularly amongst free-spirited exploration groups, when used to express the desire to enjoy the unique nature of the backrooms. Recovered note. My musings. After numerous explorations, boundless journeys through unquantifiable locations, it seems I have finally reached a place of solitude. Endless halls, long darkly lit corridors, empty structures of no end, those are what I have become accustomed to. This, however, is my first breathing point in a storm of chaos and confusion, a peaceful point where I can finally rest. Never before have I witnessed architecture such as this, brightly lit rooms with pools of blue water, surrounding one's body like a warm embrace. White ceramic tiles make up the walls and floor, reflecting the light and leaving no corner untouched by its radiance. These places are not bounded in reality, they are a macrocosm of one's mental state, a reflection of their emotions, they are a twisted parody of reality, extended interpretations of locations one does not typically give much thought to whilst passing through in the day-to-day -day lives. Exploring them can be likened to exploring a place inside a dream. Whether they are finite, I know not, it is my belief that these places reflect the headspace of those experiencing them, that it is one's emotions that keep the rooms extending, one's thoughts and emotions are the impetus for the continued growth and existence. There is no architect to these places beside our minds, that is why experiencing these places alone accentuates feelings of isolation. They are human thought pushed away from its makers, alien despite their familiarity. I've come to call them scapes, dreamlike realms one passes through, experiencing and subsequently continuing to the next, like a journey of sorts. One may exit at any time, with the right mindset and headspace, attaining it, however, is no easy feat, especially when one is running through looping hallways and decrepit offices with nonsensical geometry. Despite being illogical and foreign, these places become all you know. The places you never would have given thought to before become your whole reality, irony, is it not? Yet even when you live within them, they feel uncanny, uncomfortably familiar to a point where they lose their semblance to dreams and instead become nightmares. I have acknowledged the dangers, I have come face to face with them, after all, and can conclude that, indeed, they do remind me more of nightmares than of dreams, but that is simply part of the thrill for me. There is always the chance that every new scape may be my last. The thought has not escaped me, but it is a motivator rather than a source of discouragement. I may as well experience each one with a smile on my face and a spring in my step rather than focusing on a feeling of impending doom. I may not come out victorious, but were I to die exploring, my last breaths would be the winds of an arduous journey's pleasant end. I digress. In short, this scape in particular truly amazes me. The effect it has on those who experience it is intriguing. While one may feel peace and calmness permeating throughout it, another cannot help but notice a feeling of dread wash over them with every turn of a corner. What lurks behind them, they may wonder. Is it of blight, of malice? An explorer may feel moribund, whilst another may feel tranquil. This variety between individuals has never ceased to intrigue me. 
These pool rooms are without blemish or defect, an intricate design, a possibly infinite puzzle whose pieces form something peculiar, indescribably strange, yet indescribably perfect, it can only be the handiwork of a god. Entrances and exits, entrances, submerging oneself in the waters of level 58 and level 190 may lead to one re-emerging in this level. Porcelain tiled areas of level 233 infrequently lead to this level. In rare circumstances, underwater areas of level 130 may act as entrances to this level. Also destroying a wall and spraying it with water on level 1 or 0 and not clipping into it will lead to this level. Exits. Immersing oneself in the water of level 370 may cause re-emergence in the pools of level 130. Enclosed, dark tunnels in this level may lead to level 43. Corridors in level 370 can rarely lead to similar corridors in level 233. Drowning on this level is very dangerous as it will lead you to level 666. Not clipping in a well-light area with a calm feeling will lead to level 100.